Hello everyone, thank you all for coming. Does anyone know what a vegan is? No? No one in the class knows what a vegan is. Okay, this word's gonna come up a lot in my talk. A vegan is someone who doesn't eat, use, wear, or exploit animals in any of their day-to-day -day activities, any of their lifestyles. Who am I? Have I always been vegan? No. Have I always been sober? No. Have I always been trying to change the world and create peace? No. So, that, so we don't wear any of their skin, any of their fur, we don't use any of their feathers, we don't test, uh, use any products that have been tested on their faces. So somewhere along the line it's been programmed into us that animals are food. But you show a child a slaughterhouse, okay, and they would not think that that is food. And that's a pretty strong indicator that we should not be doing it. And what ended up happening to me is the environment shapes you. The environment that you're in will shape you into the person you are. A, a violent society will condition uh, the people in it to be violent. And I've seen that my actions had reactions, okay? And I, I couldn't see any good coming out of taking an animal's life against their will and eating their body. I didn't want that in my body. And when you eat the piece of an animal who didn't want to die, you were eating their suffering, their anxiety and their fear and everything they went through. I reflected inside myself and I said, what is it about me that I haven't changed? Okay, and ever since that man said to me about eating suffering and becoming suffering, I realized that I, it was hypocritical of me to say that I cared about some animals, cats and dogs, koalas, but I had a piece of a dead cow on my plate. You're, you're challenging people's belief systems here. Things that we've been taught our whole lives from a child that we need milk for calcium, you need meat for protein, strong bones, all of these things that we've been fed by industry, okay, so what I believed in myself, what I believed about animals, I aligned with my actions. A lot of people say they love animals, they care for them, okay, and that, I truly believe they do in their mind, but their actions don't reflect that. Okay, animals are all born innocent, just like humans are born innocent, animals stay innocent. The animals that we eat, herbivorous animals, get their protein from plants, okay? All, the, all protein comes from plants originally, and most of the nutrients do. We are their guardians and their protectors, okay? And we lure them into these traps, okay? And they have done nothing wrong to deserve what we do to them. They can't speak for themselves. They are born innocent, okay? When do you see a cow do something wrong? When does a chicken ever hurt anyone? These are innocent beings, okay? And they cannot voice their suffering to us. They cannot say to you, hey, I don't want you to do that to me. Okay, that's what I do. I say, hey, they don't want you to do that to them. Animals needed my help the most because they can't voice their suffering to you. They can't say to you, hey, I'm locked up in this cage about to get killed, can you please help me? They can't. They can't. They, they, they are helpless beings. It's not a natural thing to want to kill animals. It's a natural thing for us. We're compassionate beings to want to care for animals. Even in the most humane farms, they still betray those animals when they put them on that slaughterhouse truck and send them to the slaughterhouse, okay? Now, I feel like it's even more of a betrayal because at least the ones in the factory farms know, what, know what's coming. The other ones feel like they're being led to the slaughterhouse by their parents. They're only guardians they've had. So you can imagine the betrayal the animals feel. Uh, we just want peace, okay? An activist is someone who sees an injustice and speaks out about it. My job is to wake people up, that's all. Not, not to have a go at anyone, not to make anyone feel bad. I'm not judging anyone. If we're going to uh, treat people differently because of the way they look or treat animals differently because of the way they look, we've got a problem here. And it splits the world apart, this, this ideology, species, speciesism. But we discriminate against pigs. We put them on trucks and we send them to slaughterhouses, okay? We put them in factory farms, we, we breed them, uh, we use them for their bodies, we rip the flesh off their bones. We don't do this with dogs, but inherently they're the same. So the idea that some lives matter less is the root of all that's wrong with the world. We've chosen these animals are the ones we use, exploit and wear. These animals we care for. We do the same thing with animals. We generalize. Sheep and cows are all the same. Chickens are all the same. They are individuals with personalities, okay? They all are. Like your dogs have individual personalities. So do chickens, so do cows. So supply and demand is what keeps these slaughterhouses open. If you all want an iPhone, okay, they're gonna produce more iPhones, aren't they? You, yeah, that's how it works, supply and demand. So if you all want a burger with some cow in it, what are they gonna produce? They're gonna produce more burgers with more cows in it, okay? So this is why the, the blood, okay, and the power is on the hands of the consumer. The reason I'm making supply and demand a big point to you guys is because it's the consumers, not the, the horror that goes on in a slaughterhouse. Do you think slaughterhouse workers wake up in the morning and go, hmm, I wanna go kill animals all day in a factory that smells like feces and blood? That is not what they wanna do. We're putting them, these slaughterhouse workers in horrific conditions because we want to eat animal flesh. They miss a big piece in the middle, don't they? This is the animal on the happy farm. 
there's your burger. What about all the stuff that happens in between? There's a reason they don't advertise that to you. There's something happening along the line that we are responsible for. All animals are essentially children when we kill them. No animal reaches their natural lifespan. The, the flesh that we are eating are from sometimes infant animals. So we are essentially eating children. Eggs are part of the menstrual cycle of a bird. I don't know where along the line we've been so cleverly programmed to believe that this is food. They're bred to produce 300 a year, so nearly an egg a day. Okay, you can imagine what strain that puts on their reproductive organs, pushing out egg after egg, the calcium loss. And after 18 months of pushing out eggs, they go to a sanctuary. No, they don't, they get slaughtered for their flesh. Okay, so this is the life of a chicken, none of them get out alive. Another horrific thing that I found out about the egg industry is what we do to the male chicks. But a baby chick can rec recognize their sibling immediately after hatching. So you can imagine how distressing that would be separated from your sibling. Okay, and they, they go down this conveyor belt and they fall into something called a macerator, which is a big blender. And no, yes, they are fully conscious when they go into this macerator. Okay, a human mother produces milk for their baby. Yeah? So does she have to be pregnant to produce milk? Yeah, she does. Okay, she only starts lactating when she's pregnant. Cows are no different. They're mammals like us. So they have to be uh, impregnated. Are they becoming pregnant naturally? No, they're becoming pregnant forcefully. They get held down in a rack and the farmer will put his hand in her anus to hold the cervix, okay, which would be very uncomfortable, and they put a tube of semen into her and they impregnate her like that. So very distressing, and these are really young cows, I'm talking a year old. We are forcibly impregnating year old cows. Their children obviously want to drink their mother's milk, but we want that milk, don't we? We want to drink their, their baby's milk. So what happens to their children? All the calves are taken, okay? All of them from their mothers because they can't drink up all their milk. That's for us, okay? The males will be killed. Sometimes on their first day of life, the first 24 hours with blunt force trauma, which is uh, welfare standard. You can hit them with, with a sledgehammer to kill them on their first day of life, a calf, a little male bobby calf. The others, you know, if they want to grow them for veal, they'll grow them for a, a number of weeks and then they'll kill them for veal. What happens to the cow, the cow when she can't produce milk anymore? She gets sent to a slaughterhouse and her body will be eaten by human beings. And when do we stop drinking mother's breast milk? When we've weaned, and when we're a toddler, yeah? We don't need it anymore. There's no biological need for milk anymore. Dairy contributes to hormonal cancers in humans. Ovarian, breast and prostate, okay? I don't advocate for animal welfare, okay? And you might be surprised at that, but I'll explain why, okay? And veganism isn't about animal welfare. We don't want bigger cages for animals, we want to free animals. It means making their conditions a little bit more comfortable uh, while they are enslaved and before they are murdered. And that's not what I want. That's, what, that's not what I'd want for you if you were in a cage. I'd want you to be free, liberated. So the difference between animal welfare and animal liberation is freedom. Humane means to show compassion, kindness or benevolence. Slaughter means to kill, basically. <laughs> So how can you kill someone compassionately? So if you can't humanely kill a dog, you can't humanely kill me, how can we humanely kill a cow, a chicken, a pig, or a fish? These animals don't want to die. So that's something we have to remember. Animals do not want to die. So to take an animal's life when they have an interest in living cannot be humane. Is there a humane way to take an animal's life? Is there a humane way to enslave someone, to take away someone's freedom, to use them for their body, to exploit them? Is a bullet in the head a better way to die? Probably. Probably a better way to die, but I'll, I'll tell you right, we don't have an option between a uh, bullet in the head or a gas chamber, there's a third option, leave the animals alone. Okay, and that's what animal liberation is. So to, ter to determine whether, whether or not something is humane, first ask if you'd want it done to yourself. So how many people here are active in some way already? When I first started, I had this fire inside of my chest and it was calling out to me. If anyone else has that fire inside their heart, uh, never deny yourself the chance to spread it because that's your purpose and it's calling out to you. This is where your food comes from. I want to talk to you about the c couple of forms of activism that I find uh, the most rewarding for me and the most powerful for me. One of them is Anonymous for the Voiceless. Everyone know what Anonymous for the Voiceless is? You're drinking the milk out of her, man. That's meant for a baby, yeah. But if someone's having an emotional response, you keep it in emotion. That's meant for a baby, eh? Let's have a baby milk, kids. That's for their calf. Their calves get taken from them so we can steal their breast milk. So the calf, the boy calves get killed, yeah, eh? Us, they've got a f***ing brain like us. They yeah. think like us, they yeah. eat like us. They love like us, you know what I mean? Yeah, they suffer the same, eh? You keep it in their emotion. You say, I know you're a good person. 
You know, I can see that you care about animals. Then you have power in what happens to these animals. Would you be interested in supporting ethical industries with your food choices, your lifestyle choices? You always have to remember that you're not speaking for yourself, okay? You're not speaking on behalf of vegans and veganism and yourself. This isn't for you. You're speaking on behalf of animals, okay? So you always have to do what's best for the animals in that situation. So you have to put your feelings aside as an ambassador for animals and say, okay, how can I speak to this person that's going to be best for animals? If you don't like soy, try rice milk. If you don't like rice, try coconut milk. Yep. There's about 20 in there, man. You don't really want to be drinking hormones, cholesterol, pus and blood from a, the udder of a mother who's lost her child. And you see, if they're consuming the flesh of these animals, it's only fair that you see how it's made, hey? So these are all the ways we use animals for their body, their flesh, their milk, their eggs. And you know what? It's the most fulfilling activism I do is outreach, having a positive conversation with someone. Okay, so what we're asking the public yeah. is to see if they think that that's okay. Yeah. And if, no, if, if they don't think it's okay, if they love animals, yeah. then the only thing you can do to remain consistent is yeah. stop buying the products which support their enslavement and their death. Another powerful form of activism is the SAVE movement. Everyone here know what the SAVE movement is? Three minutes. Three minutes. Just give us three minutes. We'll only be two minutes with the animals. We'll only be two minutes, mate. Just give us two minutes and we'll let you go drive through. What? It's about facing the victims of your dinner plate. Because the moment you look at those animals in the eyes, you realise that it's not about you. Okay, we understand suffering. We've all suffered to a certain degree. I don't think anyone has suffered how the animals suffer, though. Okay, no one here. A lot of spent dairy cows there. This is what happens to spent dairy cows. We move straight into the slaughterhouse. Then you go out and do some outreach at AV. You watch how you speak for animals then, on a different level, okay, and they can feel it. Do you think it's okay that we get joy at the detriment of other animals? No, I know, I, I can understand. Uh, There's other us, things we can here, eat. I don't understand us, no. Us, yeah. we've got choice. We've got and choice. We can that. Okay, animals on the trucks, there's feces all over them, okay? Because they, they're living in their own waste. Like here, here are the animals. This is a local slaughterhouse in your area. These are the animals you're probably eating, okay? And when they are being killed, they defecate on, on themselves. They are petrified. And they had a face and they didn't want to die. You can see the fear and innocence in their eyes. So no matter how cleanly it's done, it's still cold-blooded murder. We kind of owe it to the animals. We've been eating their flesh. Let's go and you know bear witness to them once or twice and see what they're going through. I would say join your local save movement. Go out. You'd surprise yourself, really. Hello. Hello, sweetie. Do you think it's justified to stab an animal to death for a sandwich when it's unnecessary? That's pretty much it. I've got, we've got the truth on our side. It's not really hard to convince someone that you know stabbing an animal to death for no reason is immoral. Doesn't make you, you know, Mother Teresa to say, okay, I've been hurting animals, now I'm gonna stop. I can't, I cannot uh, watch what's going on and not say nothing. If you've seen an animal being abused on the side of the road, a child being abused, a woman being abused by their husband, okay, and you didn't intervene, what would society say to you? You should have done something. Okay, you should have done something about it. You should have spoken up. You know, and you don't have to intervene with, you know, physically, but you can do something, can't you? You could, you know, you could have spoken up. Why is it any different for farmed animals? Shouldn't be. I'd feel more upset seeing dogs being butchered alive than I would seeing a fish being dragged out the ocean. Okay, and I'd have to analyze that part of my psychology and go, wait a second, why do I care more about that dog than I do about that fish? Because they care about their dog. You know, they care about some animals, so they do care about animals. It's not hard to say, hey, like, what if that was your dog? You'd be on my side. You'd be helping me stop this truck full of animals. Would you want me up here speaking for you? If uh, you were in the animal's position, damn straight. I I'm not here for your health. That's not why I'm here. I'm here for the, the animals, okay? If you want to uh, drink alcohol and destroy your health, that's not on me. If they go, oh, what the health is vegan propaganda. Say, so, okay, then go refute the scientific studies they've used, the peer-reviewed journals. Is that vegan propaganda too? Are those scientists all vegan? No. I don't care why people go vegan, as long as they stop uh, funding the industries that hurt animals. Mm -hmm. What the hell film, okay? It's not, it's okay. unhealthy to put suffering and violence in your body. But I, I'm only here because people's actions have a victim. So many people that would love to hear have this conversation and you could save their life. You could save animals' lives, you can help the environment. 91% of Amazon deforestation is because of animal agriculture, okay? It's not from palm oil, it's not from paper. 
from animal agriculture because we want to consume animal flesh. If you remain silent in a situation where you could speak about it, you're basically betraying the animals, aren't you? Because you know about what happens to the animals. There's three stages of truth. Uh, ridicule, so it's laughed at. Don't eat animals, laugh at you. Then there's violent opposition, people fight you. And then there's accepted as self-evident, okay? So all truth goes through three stages. You should be angry. Animals are being abused and tortured by the trillions. But you use that anger, you channel that anger to, to get off your butt and do something. Thing is, they, can, they can't hold back truth for long. They can try to slow it down. They can try to discredit it. They can try to create some doubt in your mind, but they can't stop it. If you were to say that the movement's not progressing, then you're just not looking at the evidence. It's right there in front of us. We're a society that cares about animals. We're bolt gunning them in the head, slaughtering them for an unnecessary reason. I always bring it to ethics. I want people to reach into their hearts and show empathy. Okay, that's, that's what I think keeps the world at peace. That's what really changes the world. People to go, okay, I'm gonna do something altruistic for other people. That's why I always try to get them to connect with animals. Yeah, and it's good knowing that you're not contributing to yeah. all of this violence. And to put that violence inside your body, you know, animals that didn't want to die are in your stomach. Stop yeah, you know what I mean? Stop it's a scary thing to think about, it is. We shouldn't advocate for anything less than veganism. Do you know we, we don't advocate for vegetarianism, do you know yeah. that? Animals are feeling, breathing, sentient beings, okay? They're not objects, slaves, or machines. They exist here with us and not for us. We've been cleverly lied to, like heavily indoctrinated to believe absurdities. 10,000 species a year, extinct, because of the actions of one species, us. Okay, and people talk about pest animals. So that just goes to show, show a tiny print pick of light can, can brighten a room full of darkness. Okay, so we've got truth. We've got the truth on our side, and that's more powerful than any propaganda they can perpetuate, okay? They can only slow it down, they cannot stop it, okay? Uh, injustice cannot last forever. Um, really important time now for veganism, it really is. Uh, the animals have got more soldiers out there speaking for them than ever, ever before. You know, we've, we've, we're stronger together in solidarity than we are apart. The movement is growing exponentially, but it's only because we are standing up. We're standing up and we're speaking up and we're saying, hey, this is wrong. Being vegan isn't enough anymore. It's not, okay? We know what's going on. It's up to us to speak out. Courage is feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Okay, and it's the most liberating thing you'll ever do. Don't let fear run your life. And it's not too hard to come along and have a polite discussion with someone and, and, and opening their eyes. A lot of people just don't know about this. Saturated fat and cholesterol are killing people. Look what's happening to these animals. This might be the first time they've ever heard it. And if you're not, if, you, if you're walking around with your mouth closed all the time, how are people supposed to get this information? So, you know, you probably don't want to see animals get hurt just like I didn't. Do you know what I mean? We're saying that they don't matter. They are just products for us to eat and use and kill. Hey, you're a bit shy, are you? I'd be scared of humans too if I was you. Hey darling, hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you like belly scratches me? You could say you could take those pigs out of the gas chambers, put human beings in there, and what do you have? Look at that face. I hope humanity wakes up sooner than later, mate, or we're, or we're f yeah. yeah. Just, just think about where you're putting your money, mate. Do I think it's going to halt us? No, nothing's going to stop us at all. Like, you know, they can try, but it's just gone too far now. No, we're only be two minutes. Just one more minute. Alright guys, 10 more seconds! So they market these foods to you, like juicy and local and 100% Irish beef and delicious, right? But what I see when I see these advertisements is I see a, a suffered mother with a, with a distended udder. You know, probably a mastitis infection who just had her children taken off her for five years and then hung upside down and sliced across the throat and murdered. That's what I see. 
That's what I see. Now, I don't, I don't have a go at people who see the burger and go, oh, that's delicious. I used to too, but I, I've seen that much cruelty now, that much suffering, that I can't see anything else but that. I walk through the, the supermarket, I, I used to walk through the, uh, the butcher and just see, you know, food. They'd put like a piece of parsley on it, little happy pig picture on top, and I just think all oh, is cool. But no, I've seen the process. I've been inside of a slaughterhouse when they're decapitating cows right in front of my face. I've watched the last ounce of life uh, fade from their eyes in front of me. Okay, and I've smelt the fear in there. And it's, it doesn't smell like death in a slaughterhouse. It smells like struggle, okay, like fear, like feces. Okay, it's a horrible place for these animals. Everyone, this will be the last event um, that I've been to here. So it's been a really good week. Thanks to everyone who helped organising Maria and everyone who put their heads together and helped get me over here. Thank you very much. Yeah, keep up the great work and I hope to come back soon and just keep fighting, keep fighting. And the more people that know about that, the more people that will change. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you. When I was in gangs using drugs, hurting people around me, I was getting criticised, okay? Turned my life around, started speaking up for animals, change, trying to change the world, create peace, still getting criticised. So the point is, you're gonna be criticised no matter what you do, so you might as well follow your heart.